So let's look at the first classification algorithm that we'll use here, and that's a K nearest neighbors classification, or KNN. So um, it's one of the, the simplest algorithms of supervised learning. Um, it's based on uh, entirely on the training data set, um, and we can use it to make inferences on new data, for example, on our, on our test data set. Um, it's, it's really straightforward to understand if we first think about it in a two-dimensional input data set. So in general, of course, our input features will, um, will map out a space in an n-dimensional, um, it, it will map out an n-dimensional space where each of the input features is projected onto an n-dimensional vector, um, which is our x, and um, that gives us a single classification y. Now let's look back at two dimensions, or n equal two. Um, we can plot all of the points in our input, or all of the input features of our points in a two-dimensional plane. Um, so in this case here, we have an x and a y-axis, so that could be the two input features, one would be on the, plotted on the, on the x-axis, one would be plotted on the y-axis, and the target class, or, or uh, um, classification, um, is encoded here as a color code. So we have two classes, um, the blue squares and the red triangles. Okay, so that's where we start in a um, specific case where we have two input features or n is equal to two. Now the question becomes, um, what inference do we make for this green circle? Let's say we have um, an input features for this green circle that correspond to the coordinate um, at which this green circle is plotted. So should we assign this green circle to the blue squares class or should we assign this green circle to the red triangles class? So that's the question we're trying to solve here in k nearest neighbors. Now what do we do in k nearest neighbors? Well, logically, we look at the k nearest neighbors, where k is some integer. Um, so let's say we look for k equal to 3, we look at the three nearest neighbors to our green point here, our green circle. So we have our one um, blue square and two red triangles, so the two red triangles are in the majority, so in 3nn or k nearest neighbors with k equal to 3, we would assign this particular green circle um, the classification of the red triangles. Okay, what happens if we go to k equal to 5? Well, now we have to use the 5 nearest neighbors. So that adds these two blue squares um, to the neighbors. So now we have 3 blue squares and 2 red triangles. So now the blue squares are in a majority, and our classification for the green circle in 5NN, or in KNN with uh, the five nearest neighbors, will be that our uh, green circle belongs to the class of, be belongs to the class of the, um, of the blue squares. So what we'll see right away is that um, this uh, classification depends on our number or value for K. For K equal, for, K, for a small K, um, it will dependent will be dependent on the, the stati statistical fluctuations for larger k will of course average out much more over um, larger areas. Um, of course, it, this is mainly important on the boundaries between the different areas that might be predominantly um, in one class or the other. Um, if this green dot green circle had fallen right in the middle of those blue squares, then uh, k equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would all have given the same classification. Um, similarly, if k had, if the green circle had fallen right um, in the middle of those red triangles, then again k equal 1, 2, 3, 4 would have all given um, the same classification as of a, a red triangle class um, for, uh, for the green circle. So we can look at the impact of this, um, of the value of k for uh, another artificial data set here. So again, we have three classes, um, red, green, um, and blue. And as you can tell, there are some areas that are more populated with blue, some more with red, some more with green, and there's some sparsely populated areas in between. So if we go to k equal one classification, then these are the areas in which we classify um, the points as, as red, green, or blue. Um, what you can see here is that um, there's little islands that form here. 
um, based on the fact that, uh, for example, here this, this little green, this lonely green point, training point is in the middle of all those blue points. So that causes this small area of, um, of a classification of green to appear um, because in that area the green point is the closest and if we're at k equal to 1 then only the closest point matters to begin with. Um, same thing here we have another lonely green point in the middle of this red region we have a lonely blue point in the middle of this green region you can see that there's many of these little islands that form and the edges between the regions are, are rather jagged because of um, the fact that this is really looking at individual training points um, rather than averaging out over multiple of them. When do we average out over multiple of them? That's when we go to a larger k, so the, the rightmost um, plot here is the equivalent plot, but now uh, obtained for k equal to 5. Um, so this is a classifier where we average out over the five nearest points in our training data set, um, and so of course the this won't be as affected by individual points as you can see here this green point now falls in the middle of a blue region but doesn't actually affect the classification there um, there's uh, generally smoother edges the other thing you see is that now we have regions that are white um, so when do we have a white region um, well that could happen for example when we have um, in, in one, in, in, in this region, the nearest neighbor might be um, two greens, two red, and one blue. Um, so since there's no one majority class, we don't have a, uh, a majority, and so we don't have a classification. So essentially, the algorithm doesn't know what to do. There's too much uncertainty um, for those uh, regions. But in general, these larger K values will have uh, better behavior, will have smoother behavior. Now we've talked about nearest neighbors, uh, so we've talked about k um, in, in, in this value here, um, we've talked about, about nearest, um, but we haven't defined what we mean with the distance here. So we can introduce various different distance metrics. Um, of course one of the things we'll do, as we already talked about last time, is we'll rescale the input features to um, uniform regions. Um, or, or to, to rescale um, z values, so we we subtract the mean value of each feature and divide by the standard deviation so that they're all kind of Gaussian range distributed, um, even though of course they're not necessarily going to be normally distributed within that range. Um, but at least they'll all have approximately the same range over which they, they vary. Um, so if that's the case, then no one variable um, has a different distance than other variables and so it makes sense to just have a, a Euclidean distance where we take um, the sum of the, the, the square differences and uh, take the square root of that just a regular distance um, in, in three-dimensional space or in two-dimensional space but we extend that now to an n-dimensional space. We can also use the Manhattan distance which you might be um, you might remember from uh, from project 3 if you've already started working on that um, so that's another way in which we can um, calculate this, uh, this distance metric. Finally, um, in all of the examples I've given here, um, we've used k equal to 1, k equal to 3, k equal to 5. Um, so why didn't we pick k to be an even number? Well, in uh, the, the problem I've given, it was a binary classification between red triangles and blue squares. Uh, and so in that binary classification, um, if we pick an even number, then we can end up, for example, for k equal four, to 4, we can end up in a situation where we have two red triangles and two blue, blue squares among the four nearest neighbors. So we can't make a decision. Um, so in binary classification problems, if you just pick an odd number, um, then you'll never have that problem. You will always have at least one class that's in the majority. Um, so. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind is that sometimes you can have equal distances. So um, again, and it depends on how your data set is ordered. Um, so that's something that uh, scikit-learn, for example, points out as well. So now that we know what nearest neighbor, k nearest neighbor um, classification is and how it works, we can apply it um, to our problem of uh, identifying iris flowers using our, uh, um, our, our k nearest neighbors. 